What is going on everybody? Welcome back here today to another NBA kind of talk type video. It is going to be a Q&A. I actually guys, I'm going to be on Twitter that I do plan on doing a weekly basketball Q&A on my channel. So it's where you guys are part of the tweet and I answer you guys basketball questions and the, these videos that are weekly. So if you want to be featured in next week's one, just follow me on Twitter and you guys can reply to it. So yeah, we're going to be doing these weekly and yes, I'm going to be answering you guys' questions. Drop a like if you guys do enjoy these kind of NBA type talk videos. I don't know what's going to be playing in the background. It might just be like NBA highlights. It might, I don't know. I have no idea yet. So yeah, there'll also be a double upload later today. There'll be a Trey Young Hawks rebuild. So for you guys that do like those rebuilds, there'll be one out later today. And I also don't sign anybody big in the first free agency. I know people have gotten on my case a little bit about that lately. So we're going to start off with a kind of a juicy one. And I don't know how to pronounce his first name, but it's Makayak 2018-2019 Rookie of the Year on Twitter X, who is the most overrated player in the NBA. And I'm going to stick to who I've been saying for pretty much the past year and a half now. And I'm going to say Russell Westbrook. And people are going to be like frankly typing, oh, he's an MVP, triple double. He's amazing. He's an amazing player. I still, I mean, he's coming, it's, he's not really, he's overrated that much lately. Kind of a lot of people have been realizing, especially this year, that he isn't as good of a player. I'm just sticking to what I've been saying for the past two years. If you watch my Twitch streams, you know, anytime I get answered or asked that question, I answer it every single time I say Russell Westbrook. But I, I'll say it now, um, Russell Westbrook, I think he's the seventh best player in the NBA. I think he's an incredible talent. I have also said he will never win a title being the best player on a team. I just don't think it's going to happen. I could be, I'll, I'll probably be wrong and he'll probably just win it, I don't know, down the line. But yeah, I think Russell Westbrook is the most overrated player in the NBA. Still think he's amazing. Still think he is the second best point guard in the NBA. I'm not hating on him like that. I just think he gets too much overhyped. He is calming down like everybody's, or a lot of people have been realizing that he isn't really that good. Or no, he... He, he's good, but he isn't, like, the top-tier player that people once had him, and he isn't the best point guard in the league. People have realized that, but, yeah, I'm just going to say Russell Westbrook, just to make it interesting. I'm not going to say, like, um, like Whiteside or uh, or Clint Capella. Matteo Fiore, um, 0x. If Kobe wasn't traded, do you think he would have had he would have spent his entire career on the Hornets? I'm going to say no. I think the main reason he did stay in L.A. was because of the reason that it was L.A., and he wanted to be traded out of there at one point. You know, there was the Chicago rumors. Uh, I don't know if there was any, like, Boston rumors but there probably was i know the chicago rumors were pretty big at that time to send him to chicago i believe and it wasn't lebron i don't know but I, I don't think he would have stayed his career in charlotte they wouldn't have been as good they would never have had Shaq. never would have had some of these guys that kind of kept kobe around like Pagasol or like buying him at one point so yeah I, I i think kobe would not have spent his whole career on the hornets if he was not traded on draft night avenger onyx what do you think the Cavs should do when if lebron leaves so if lebron leaves they have obviously a young piece in colin sexton they do have their pick, I believe, top 10 protected from the Hawks next year. So I do one of two things, or I'll, I'll do a couple things. I'll say now. So LeBron's gone. You're focusing on Sexton. Right now, he's your only true young piece. And I would call up teams, try to trade Kevin Love. Now, I would have tried to trade Kevin Love on draft night. Maybe you could have called up Phoenix, got like a 16th pick, something like that. You could have maybe traded him to Philly. Who knows? They would have maybe taken Kevin Love for the 10th pick. I don't know. They could have maybe worked out a package there. I would have did that. I would maybe say you wait a year and you could trade Kevin Love next offseason if he can bump up his value this year being the number one scoring option. That could definitely work. Seeing him with the pick and pop with Sexton could be pretty lethal. I don't think they're going to win more than 25 games if they don't really add anybody big there, even though they won't because they are paying Tristan Thompson a lot of money. They're paying J.R. Smith, Kyle Korver, George Hill a lot of money. I would also call teams, try to move George Hill or Jordan Clarkson, move one of those guys. I would also re-sign Rodney try to get him a full year starting, try to maybe roll with a... Like, I, I would just try to see a Sexton, JR, Rodney Hood, Love, Tristan Thompson lineup. I think that would be very interesting. But, yeah, like I said, you just got to start building through the draft. Try to make Cleveland relevant again without him. I don't think Colin Sexton's going to be your Kyrie Irving. And, yeah, I, I would say you move on. I would try to move on from Love either right now or you wait till next year's season. And then you try to maybe find a buyer for a George Hill or a Jordan Clarkson. And I would try to re-sign Rodney Hood. Jeremy Fishburger asks, what team will be the next team to beat in Fears post-Warriors run and considering young talent and development? So, I would say, obviously, in the Eastern Conference, right now, it's going to be Boston and Philly, for obvious reasons that Tatum, Brown, they're all so young. Yes, Hayward, I believe, is 30. Horford is, boy, like 32, something like that. Kyrie's 28, 29, 27. Uh, they're going to get up there, but I think with Brown and Tatum, if they don't move one of those, that could be a scary one-two punch for years to come. Obviously, in Philly, you got Ben Simmons, you got Fultz, you got Embiid, you got Sarge, bunch of young guys there, Zary Smith. It's going to be hard to beat them. I would say maybe an up-and-coming team. I don't know. Um, landing good prospects. Atlanta, I don't actually I don't even know if it, if like Prince, Collins, and Young could even be that special. I'm not going to say the Knicks because that's just a biased opinion. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely say those two for now, at least in the Eastern Conference. I, I think Orlando could have a shot if they do some right things. 
Um, I, I would say you definitely call up Atlanta, try to trade for Schroeder, but no, nah, I'm not. I'm not putting them in the same conversation as Boston and as Philly, also Milwaukee. So I think those three teams in the East, and if we're not seeing the Warriors in the West, definitely I think Denver, Minnesota. And I, obviously for reasons that if Michael Porter Jr. pans out, pairing him up with Gary Harris and Jamal Murray and Jokic is pretty scary. Millsap will definitely be gone by then or he'll age. Uh, Minnesota, if they keep Wiggins around, you got Wiggins. You can hopefully re-sign Butler. Butler could be 32, 33. Eh, but you still have obviously Carl Towns, Carl Anthony Towns, and Phoenix. I think Phoenix could be pretty scary in a couple years. If they get like a top 10 pick next year and they can land like a stud power forward, like a stretch forward, like a Nazir Little or a Zion Williamson or a Cameron Reddish, that could be very scary. And if they can land a point guard, you can maybe put Devin. I think they should honestly experiment this year with putting Devin Booker at point guard because you can roll Devin Booker at point guard. You can run Bridges at shooting guard, Josh Jackson at small forward. Maybe try to move TJ Warren, try to find a power forward maybe pull the trigger on kevin love actually i don't think i would do that but then yeah you could do that and then you got center of um center of deandre and also back to the Cavs. if you're also i would try to trade Warren and junior try to find a buyer on that get like a late first or something i would have did that this draft but yeah so like i back to the Suns. i think they could be a very scary team so yeah if i just say three teams from the eastern conference or uh three teams from the east would be milwaukee philly and boston west would be denver minnesota utah too utah too and phoenix mdu games x what do you think miami uh the miami heat would do in coming years they look like a team that will remain a mid to lower seed and make no strides to get better what do you think i agree with you now i always kind of bashed on detroit and charlotte for their current states and i think i have to add miami into this because miami has a boatload of bad contracts I'm pretty sure they don't have their first pick in 20... They didn't have their first round pick this year. They don't have it in 2021. I'm not even sure if they have it in 2019, 2020. So next two years, they do have their first round picks. They have, like, no second round picks. So, honestly, if Dwayne Wade retires, if he doesn't, uh, he'll be, honestly, one of your best players. I would try to trade Whiteside. I would call up Milwaukee. See what you could do for that. Drogic, if when he's a free agent in a year or two and he wants more than $20 million, let him walk. Let him walk. I would try to just tank at that point. Because you have so many bad contracts, and they're all like mid-tier players that in the Eastern Conference, it'll bring you to the playoffs, and that would just hurt your draft stock, and you're not going to be able to land one of these superstars in the NBA, or like, yeah, one of these superstar prospects. So like I said, I would try to trade Whiteside. I would probably try to move Drogic in the next couple years um, before he's a free agent as well. I mean, I think you're stuck with Tyler Johnson's contract. You're probably stuck with Kelly Olenek, who did not play bad for them. I would... But, like, they like him at center, and I did like Bam out of bio, so I'd rather just go with Bam out of bio, and maybe if you could trade a Linux, I don't know. I, I like Josh Richardson. He's making a lot of money because they kind of got screwed over like the Blazers did in 2016's free agency in 2015 where they gave James Johnson, all, or Linux was last year, James Johnson, Tyler Johnson, Josh Richardson, all this freaking money. Whiteside, they're literally paying these guys so much money. Luke Babbitt, I'm pretty sure got a decent deal, or Josh McRoberts, one of those guys. I don't know. I, I think Miami's got to look to trade Whiteside, look to trade... Drogic and just kind of capitalize with picks before because you don't want your worst shooter being 2021 when you don't even have your first round pick so that's what i'm gonna try to say i mean i would try to trade your better players and you could roll a line about there i don't know say you get some random point guard uh you have josh richardson you have james johnson you have olenic at a bio you can roll with that with white side and um Drogic off the team you try to get another lottery pick plus you can maybe get a lottery pick for Drogic you're not going to get one for Whiteside but you could maybe land some piece that you could maybe take a chance on maybe you can call Milwaukee I don't know if they would do Thonmaker for Whiteside at this point and you would have to take on like Henson or Della Dova's contract but I would maybe think about that I don't know just try to get a young piece for Whiteside if you can or just some weight draft pick I don't know to a team that maybe needs a rim protector like San Antonio or Milwaukee are good examples but yeah I mean it's it's not much you could do they really hurt themselves with these bad free agencies where the CBA went up and they just splurged all their money on mid-tier players but yeah Miami's not in a good state they gotta either trade or tank up comes sports action the LA Clippers going to a full rebuild or to be mediocre in the west so this kind of ties into somebody i'll probably bring it up somebody asked you'll probably know who you are about jerome robinson it was kj hong who asked that question he said like why did they draft jerome robinson so i'm gonna tie these two here so one jerome robinson i'll talk about that first i would have taken michael porter on the board i would have taken the potential of that yes you might already have tobias harris and daniel gallon are on roster already but who cares he's probably not even gonna play his rookie year or he's most likely not gonna play most of it so why well, i don't know why they care about that so you already drafted another guard when you already have teo dosich beverly rivers Gilgis, Wu Will, I don't only oh my god, they have literally so many guards. I don't know if CJ Williams is gonna get time back there. And I feel like they have Sidarius Thornwell, they have so many guards. I don't like I like the shy I love the shy Gilgis trade that they got him. I don't agree with the Jerome Robinson. I would have traded down to get him. But yeah, to go into this one, should they go a full rebuild or be mediocre? You gotta rebuild. You know me. Like I like I've talked about this with so many teams. I've talked about this with Toronto. I've talked about this with Portland. Why have your best years right now? 
when you're never going to win it. You're not going to beat LeBron, hence Toronto. You're not going to beat Golden State, hence Portland. Why have your best years now when you can try to build up like Philly has done, like Boston has done, like Phoenix has done, and have your best years four years down the line? Because that's what I would do when maybe the Warriors break up or some of them regress. Maybe injuries come into play and some people slow down or KD leaves at one point. I don't know. But yeah, I would just have your best years for later on. So I'm saying Clippers, you build around Tobias Harris. You let DeAndre Jordan walk. You don't want to be tied into that. If you can do a sign and trade, do it. Uh, I brought up the Pascal Siakam and Jonas Valanciunas for DeAndre Jordan. Talk before. I don't know if you can get Pascal, but if you can get like maybe Norman Powell, just a young piece. And then, yeah, you, you do what you want. You try to sell tickets. You're still in LA. You're probably still going to sell tickets. I don't know much about their attendance, but I'm sure it's it's pretty solid. You build around Shai Gilgis. You build around Jerome Robinson, and you build around Tobias Harris. Those are the three pieces you build around. You try to get another lottery pick next year. You maybe try to do a sign and trade with DeAndre Jordan. I don't think anyone's going to take Gallinari's contract. But yeah, I, I say you move on from that. You can try to trade Wu Will. He is 32. I think a team would give a late first up for him. Maybe, I mean, I think um, the uh, Celtics would have at the deadline. They would have gave up at least their first. And you could have maybe just gotten Robert Williams. Um, but obviously that would never have happened because stuff would have changed. But yeah, I think that's what they should do. I think Rivers is in his contract year. I think Gallon already has like three years left. I think Boban has a year or two left. Beverly has the end of this year. I do like Beverly. I'd bring him back as a backup. But yeah, I, I see you build around Robinson, you build around Shai Gilgis, you build around Tobias Harris, that big three, and yeah, you try to build through your draft, try to land that stud, either small forward or power forward to play with Tobias, and you try to get that new center that you can get for cheaper than paying DeAndre Jordan all this money he's going to want in this offseason. He might not even want to stay. So Kush Kaparex, how good do you think, or how do you think the Bulls will be in five years? Now, I, I did want to talk about the Bulls' future because I am a big Chris Dunn guy. I thought he was a complete bust. I'm going to say I was wrong on that. I thought he was a complete bust after his rookie year in Minnesota. Changed things around, looked like one of the better defensive point guards in the NBA. Kind of see a little bit of Patrick Beverly in him, not going to lie. Maybe a glimpse of Mike Conley. Don't know if he'll ever peak that good. But I do like Zach Levine at shooting guard, athletic shooting guard freak. Uh, I do like the Wendell Carter Jr. pick. I think actually out of every pick in the top 10, he has the most bust potential in my opinion. But I think he's could be a very good player. Uh, if he's a bust, I wouldn't be surprised as other guys. Like if like Trey Young was a complete bust or Mo Bamba was a bust or Doncic was a bust or I don't know, even if Sexton. I, I think Doncic, I'm at uh, Wendell Carter Jr. could be a bust. But I'm not going to say he will be. I think he's actually a very good compliment to Lauren Marketing right now. And I'm not saying he's going to be. I think he's actually going to be a good player in the NBA. I'm just saying I wouldn't be very surprised if he was one. I think him and Marketing is your future front court. You don't touch that. You don't do anything to mess that up. I think Robin Lopez has one year left on his deal. So you ride that out. You get done with it. Now, you have your front court of your future. And you possibly have your back court of your future in um, uh, uh, Chris Dunn and Zach Levine. Small forward is your is your uh, question mark here now. I don't think you're going to pitch LeBron or PG to come here. There is some free agents down the line that may, maybe would join you. I don't know. Uh, the best small forward free agents next year. Melo. Maybe LeBron again. I know like Clay and Jimmy Butler. Maybe you can recruit Jimmy Butler to be back in a year from now if he doesn't like it in Minnesota. Play him at small forward. That's a scary Bulls team. But I think five years is too long for me to project where they're going to be. I think they're definitely going to be a lottery team this year. I don't know if they're playoff ready. But I think they could actually make a push for an 8th or 7th seed. Or they could just surprise all of us and get a 5 or a 4 seed. But I don't see them passing Philly, Indiana, uh, wherever LeBron sees in the East if he does. Um, Philly, Indiana, Boston, Toronto still. Uh, I don't think they'll pass any of those teams, but I think they could be a sneaky playoff team this year. If I'm them, I'm not trying to do that. I'm still trying to tank. Try to get that small forward, which in this draft class, there is a lot of players you could get at small forward. You can get a Romeo Lankford, who might be able to undersize, but you can get a RJ Barrett. You can get a Zion Williamson. You can get a Nazir Little. You can get a Cameron Reddish. There's a lot of good small forward prospects, and yeah, I think that they should probably try to not do as good this year, and then they could roll out and get that small forward to complete that good young starting five. Right in the next, does the NBA really have a problem with officiating, or are the games called fairly and mostly criticized by biased fans? Now, I hate this on Twitter. I mean, it mostly happens in playoff games, and I don't, I can't really speak because I'm a Knicks fan. I don't really root that hard in playoff games, and I haven't since 2012. Embarrassing that is, but I think it's mainly to do with just criticized by bias fans. I personally think that because every time you see a team lose in the playoffs, their fan base cries about the refs. Every time it's about the refs. I swear to God, it's about the refs every single time. It's not how they played. It's not so bad. Like, I, do you remember the, I think it was the Celtics Sixers game. I'm not just pointing out Sixers fans. I'm just using this as an example. I remember it was the Celtics Sixers, Sixers game. I don't think it was the confetti game. It was the one where Al Horford got that steal at the end of the game. You guys probably know which one I'm talking about. They blew that game at the end of that. They played the worst, like, two-minute basketball to finish that game ever. Like, it was just strictly on the players and the coaching staff. 
and the fans just blew it on the or just blamed it on the refs. And that just like it's just a small example. I'm not just pointing out Sixers fans. It's it's every team that does it. Now I I, I think this is normal. I think I would do it too. I think you just want to blame somebody. You don't want to blame your team. You want to blame the refs. Refs do make bad calls. I'm not saying they're perfect. They make some horrible calls, some terrible calls. There was that the play in the Pacers series where LeBron was out of bounds. They said it, but he wasn't. And the goaltending call, back to back crucial missed calls. It can't get any worse than that. And I don't know. I think they have their down. Every ref in every sport is bad. They're they're all. I mean, like they have their downtimes. But like you don't look when they get a right call. They only look when they get wrong calls. I think it's. I think mainly they don't have a ref problem. It's on bias fans. I'm um, probably gonna do a couple more questions. Kyle X, what is the best rebuilding strategy? Tank. Uh, and then he used the Suns as ex an example. Be mediocre and try acquiring stars. Pistons. I don't know if that's the best example for them, but. We obviously can see that from the Blake Griffin trade. Our uh, compete, but stock pick. So I'm not going to use the teams to use as an example, but I'll use the three. I think that it's definitely tanking. I think also compete, but stock picks is good. Um, we can use Philly as that, a team that stocked so many picks. Boston is probably a great example for a team that stocked picks. I don't really know off the top of my head how they got the like the Grizzlies pick and how they got the, um, the uh, uh, Clippers pick. But what a team should do definitely is if you're decent and you have and you're, you know you're not winning it all this year, and you have a player that won't really be a big player for you in four or five years, you can look like a Tyreek Evans type player this year, like somebody in that realm, like a Lou Will, and you call up maybe like a competing team, say we're like the Grizzlies this year, right? And they Tyreek Evans, and they know he's not going to be really the future of the team, and you call up maybe like Boston, right? And I, I don't think Boston is the best example, but I would say maybe Houston could be. Eh, I don't know about Houston. I'm trying to think of a team that in five years from now could take the down spiral. So, like, maybe in, like, three years from now. I mean, if Miami had all their picks, like, we'll use a team for Miami. Like, a competing team, but you know they're really the, they don't have the brightest future in the NBA. Maybe, like, Portland. I don't know. Eh, probably not Portland. Maybe, like, San Antonio. That could have been one. But, yeah, you call one of those teams that really doesn't have the best young prospects, and you call up, we'll give you this so-and-so player right now. You give us a top five protected pick in four or five years from now, and you stockpile picks. It happened with Boston, and then they were able to trade down from one in a draft to three, still get the player they wanted, Jason Tatum, and they got that Kings pick from, from uh, Philly, which was just, it's huge. That Kings pick could be a top five pick next year, and they could be in the NBA Finals, so... That is huge. I, I just think definitely just tanking while acquiring picks and then honestly like signing mid-tier stars with the cap space you should have and then you can unload those guys. Sorry for my computer going up, but unloading those guys for picks in mid-seasons for teams that want to contend. So Derek Maloniex, what would your dream offseason be for the Knicks? Obviously, I'm a Knicks fan. I'm guessing he's talking about this offseason. So I wanted, I, I think I did a four-step thing of what I wanted to do. So obviously, as a dream Knicks fan right now, I wanted either Michael Porter Jr., Kevin Knox, or Mikael Bridges. We got that one. Check that one off. Next one is... I would like for them to unload the Courtney Lee contract, not for the aspect of the saving cap space, because I don't think they need any cap space right now, but I think it's for the time that I don't think he fits, the, he's not going to fit the future, and I think I just want the young guys to get playing time, like I want Neil Keenan and Burke and Moody to get all the point guard minutes, and I want Tim Hardaway Jr. and Dotson to get all the shooting guard minutes, I don't want anybody else touching those minutes, and I think Courtney Lee kind of messes it up a little bit, I, I would not mind like if Moody didn't get any minutes either, I'd rather just be Hardaway and Dotson, Burke and Neil Akina. But I think I would like that for them to move Lance Thomas, and I would like for them to move Courtney Lee. I don't think they're going to move Lance Thomas because I heard David Fizdale likes him. But I think Courtney Lee could be on the way out to a team that maybe just wants a 3 and D guy who I think has one year left on his contract. But yeah, I, I don't want them to sign anybody. I kind of, in the beginning of the offseason, I did kind of want them to go after Joyce Randall, but I'm not too. I don't really want that anymore. And I would like for them to maybe see if they can move Ennis Kanner if he signs back with them. Maybe Milwaukee they could do. We'll take Devil the Dova. You give us maybe a first round pick or something like that. That would be kind of nice. I don't think they would ever part ways with with Brogdon just to get rid of that contract. But maybe they would do a, a trade, like a sign and trade, Jabari Barker for Ennis Kanner. That would be interesting. I don't know I don't know if they if they could do that. But yeah, I think that'd be very interesting to do. And I, I think I want to wait 2019 free agency where they can offer a max deal. Let it, our hopes and dreams can be for Kawhi Leonard or Kyrie Irving or one of those guys. I don't know. But I'd rather just, just develop the big three this year. At least Neil Akina and Knox. I don't know if Chris Sops is going to play this year. But then, yeah, you put all your eggs in your basket next year. Hopefully, Chris Sops can just show, can play at least for a month this year at like a 25 minute a night pace. Just 
show what he has so free agents know that Chris Stops came back to the Chris Stops he was and now will entice free agents that's what I hope kind of happens throughout the season and I just want like Burke to be a dope six man I want Neil Aquino to be that good starter I would like for Neil Aquino to average 12 to 13 points a game seven assists two steals I would love that and be one of the top pick and roll defenders one of the top perimeter defenders like he was as a rookie and then I, I would just really want Kevin Knox to see if he can average 15 a night or 14 a night I would love that so yeah so yeah I think that's gonna wrap up my first weekly q and I appreciate everyone that asked the question i'm sorry if i didn't get around to answer it i've looked through all of these and there's so many i think we got like over 150 and yeah i appreciate all of them uh shout out to legendary ea and massa for asking questions too i appreciate it but uh yeah i think that's gonna be it for the first q a the follow me on twitter linked in the description of my twitter is if you want to be featured in the next one next week also let me know in the comments what do you guys think of any of the questions i asked and what do you think of these these type of videos and yeah just drop a like if you guys did enjoy there will be a trey young hawks rebuild out later today I love you guys so much. I appreciate all the support lately. We are counting down the days till free agency where it's going to get hype, and I'm excited. So, yeah, that's going to be for me. Thank you for watching. I love you guys. See you guys next video. Peace.